bridge ahead of you and as you enter it you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it say the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt its owners asked them why are you untying the colt? They replied the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near to the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Amen. <clears throat> well, okay, I'm going to mute everyone just while I speak, okay? And then you can unmute yourselves afterwards, all right? Last week, when Jesus rides in on the donkey, um, just the first thing to say is that this is uh, something that was prophesied. It says in Zechariah, Chapter 9, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem, see your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So Zechariah prophesied that this would happen um, hundreds of years before, probably about, about five or six hundred years before. And so um, this is a, something that was bound to happen. Um, now, the things that I want us to notice, I want to encourage us to notice and to be encouraged by ourselves, is firstly the context of this. Remember, by the end of the week, Jesus is going to be hanging on a cross. <coughs> now, just try and put yourself in Jesus' position, okay? Imagine you know that by the end of this week, that's it, you're going to be crucified. Crucifixion was the, the most a, a terrible, awful torture um it was a terrible terrible way to go really awful um my guess is that like me probably <coughs> you wouldn't really be able to think about much else right now that that would be looming large it wasn't just the crucifixion jesus was about to receive upon himself the wrath of god the guilt of the whole world i mean we can't begin to imagine how terrible that must have been and Jesus begins the week with that looming large. And uh, now, if you're anything like me, as I said, you wouldn't be able to think about anything else much. Uh, yeah, imagine you, you got a letter today saying, on Friday, you're evicted from your house. Right now, you would probably be thinking about all sorts of um, things about, about that. And, um, and that's natural for us to think about those things, to be concerned about things. Um, so you would have expected Jesus to be full of worries, fears, and anxiety. And yet, what do we find? We find a joyful occasion. As Jesus rides in on the donkey's colt, people are waving the branches. They've, they, they've laid down their cloaks. They're really honoring Jesus. And people are praising God. And they're singing Hosanna and, um, to the son of David and, uh, and, and acknowledging Jesus as their king. This is a wonderful, joyful time. Tomorrow, when we go to church, we're going to be worshipping and praising God. Zoom church. <laughs> Zoom church, yeah. And that will be a wonderful time. And, uh, and yet, you know, it raises the question, doesn't it, for us? So how is it that Jesus was able to be so joyful himself on that day, knowing what was going to come. And here's another thing to realise. All those people, the, it says the great crowds all around Jerusalem, they gathered and they were singing and praising. They were the same voices that a few days later are going to be shouting, crucify, crucify. The same people. At the beginning of the week, Hosanna. At the end of the week, crucify him. And again, Jesus knew that. Now, if I was Jesus, I'd have been looking at them and thinking, you bunch of hypocrites. You know, away with you, with your empty praise, with your shallow praise. But Jesus doesn't do that, does he? 
He accepts all their praise, even though it's shallow and superficial. And in many ways, we can be a bit like them, can't we? Jesus you know, talks about those who on it with their lips, they honor me, but their hearts are far from me. We don't want to be those people. Um, but, the, but the thing is this, Jesus accepts even our unworthy praise. That's an amazing thing. And, uh, and so even when our praise and our worship is weak and feeble, um, is, is not full, Jesus accepts it. Their praise, it was very superficial, they were very fickle. And so I wanted just to just give some, a little bit of thought to experiencing and enjoying the moments in which we live. Maybe you've got things, concerns and fears about the future, and there are things that would worry you. Uh, and maybe they're very real concerns. But we shouldn't let those things about the future rob us of the real joys right now. We ought to celebrate and enjoy the good things that God has given. Even in lockdown, we should look for all the good things and enjoy and celebrate and be thankful for them. Jesus said, and he put this into practice, didn't he? He said, do not worry about tomorrow. Didn't he? And, and Jesus wasn't worrying about tomorrow. And the Apostle Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, process, present your request to God. You know, there, there is a time for preparing emotionally, psychologically, spiritually for bad things when we know they're going to happen. And for Jesus, Palm Sunday was not the time for preparing for Good Friday. That, there was a time for that, and that was on Thursday. It's as though Jesus set aside time for preparing for the cross. And on Thursday, when he was about to be confronted with it, he prepared himself. How did he prepare himself? Well, not by worrying and being anxious all week, but by when it comes to it at the proper time, he prayed. Do not be anxious about anything, but with prayer and petition, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. That's what Jesus did. And so, you know, this teaches us many things. You know, the Pharisee said, you know, can't you hear what they're saying? You should shut them up, Jesus. And Jesus said, even if they were shut up, the rocks would cry out. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus is worthy of praise. And if he would take praise from rocks, then our praise is something that he would love to hear. So I want to encourage us today. And throughout this week, if, even as we walk with Jesus, to not allow worries and concerns about tomorrow to rob us in any way whatsoever of the joy and the good things that he's doing now. I know. So can, we, can I encourage us to do that? But when those things come, they're set aside an appropriate time to pray and commit those things to the Lord when the time comes. And the Lord will strengthen you and give you peace. So that's the Lord's way of doing things. That's what we see him doing.